Hello and welcome to OR channel. Do you know how to identify atrial and ventricular enlargement on an ECG? Let's get started. Cardiac enlargement can be due to either dilation of a heart chamber or hypertrophy of the heart muscle. In dilation, the heart muscle is stretched and the chamber becomes enlarged, while in hypertrophy, the heart muscle fibers actually increase in size, resulting in an enlargement of the chamber. When hypertrophy occurs, the total number of heart muscle fibers does not increase, rather each individual fiber becomes larger. A predictable ECG effect of cardiac hypertrophy is an increase in the voltage or duration of the P-way or QRS complex. Cardiac enlargement usually results from chronic pressure or volume load on the heart muscle, but in rare cases it can be due to genetic abnormalities. Pathologic hypertrophy and dilation can be accompanied by fibrosis and changes in myocardial geometry, which may worsen myocardial function and lead to arrhythmias and chronic heart failure. The autonomic nervous system, inadequate myocardial perfusion, the nitric oxide system, and the renin angiotensin axis may all play roles in the complicated perturbations linking hypertrophy and fibrosis of heart muscle cells with dysfunction of other organs. Let's take a look on the effects of enlargement of the right atrium, either through dilation or hypertrophy on the P wave in an ECG. An increase in the voltage of the P wave may be observed, and to recognize a large P wave, one must know the dimensions of a normal P wave. The normal P wave at rest is less than 2.5 mm in amplitude and less than 0.12 seconds in width. Overload of the right atrium may produce an abnormally tall P wave exceeding 2.5 mm, referred to as P pulmonale, which is usually seen in leads D2, D3, a VF, and sometimes B1. However, the diagnosis of right atrial enlargement based on tall peaked P waves has limited sensitivity and specificity. Right atrial abnormality is usually associated with right ventricular enlargement and may be caused by pulmonary or congenital heart diseases such as pulmonary valve stenosis, atrial septal defects, Epstein's anomaly, and tetralogy of falloff. How the enlargement of the left atrium affects the P wave on an electrocardiogram. Normally, the left atrium depolarizes after the right atrium, but left atrial enlargement results in a prolonged duration of atrial depolarization, which is indicated by an abnormally wide P wave. Left atrial enlargement produces a wide P wave with a duration of at least 0.12 seconds or three small boxes. The amplitude of the P wave may be normal or increased with left atrial enlargement. In some cases, patients with coronary artery disease may have broad P waves without detectable enlargement of the left atrium, and the abnormal P waves probably represent an atrial conduction delay in a normal size chamber. Therefore, the more general term left atrial abnormality is recommended to describe these abnormally broad P waves. The P wave sometimes has a distinctive humped or notched appearance, and the second hump corresponds to the delayed depolarization of the left atrium. These humped P waves are usually best seen in one or more of the extremity leads. Lead V1 sometimes shows a distinctive biphasic P wave, which has a small initial positive deflection and a prominent wide negative deflection. The prominent negative deflection corresponds to the delayed stimulation of the enlarged left atrium. In some cases of left atrial abnormality, both the broad, often humped P waves in leads I and II and the biphasic P wave in lead V1 may be seen. In other cases, only broad, notched P waves are seen. Patients with enlargement of both atria may show a combination of patterns, such as tall and wide P waves, which is most likely with severe cardiomyopathy or valve disease. In right ventricular hypertrophy, the right chest leads show tall R waves, indicating the spread of positive voltages from the hypertrophied right ventricle toward the right. Additionally, right ventricular hypertrophy often produces two additional ECG signs, right axis deviation and T-wave inversions in right to mid-precordial leads. The chest leads to the left of leads showing tall R waves may display a variable pattern. In summary, with right ventricular hypertrophy, the ECG may show tall R waves in the right chest leads and the R wave may be taller than the S wave in lead V1. Right ventricular hypertrophy may occur in a variety of clinical settings. An important cause is congenital heart disease, such as pulmonary stenosis, atrial septal defect, tetralogy of fallout, or Eisenmenger syndrome. 
Therefore, it is crucial to understand the ECG changes produced by right ventricular hypertrophy to aid in diagnosis and proper management of the condition. Left ventricular hypertrophy is a condition in which the left ventricle of the heart becomes enlarged, often due to increased workload. The ECG changes produced by left ventricular hypertrophy are predictable and include abnormally tall, positive R, waves in the left chest leads and abnormally deep negative S, waves in the right chest leads. However, high voltage in the chest or extremity leads can sometimes be seen in normal people, especially athletes and young adults. Therefore, it is important to look for associated STT changes and signs of left atrial overload, such as broad P waves in the extremity leads or wide biphasic P waves in lead V1, before making a diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy. If hypertrophy is present in both ventricles, the ECG usually shows mainly evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy. An echocardiogram should be obtained to determine the presence or degree of cardiac chamber enlargement when necessary. It's important to note that the voltage criteria used to diagnose left ventricular hypertrophy in the chest and limb leads are by no means absolute numbers. In fact, many different criteria have been proposed, reflecting the imperfection of ECG in providing a test with both high sensitivity and specificity. If the sum of the depth of the S wave in lead V1 and the height of the R wave in either lead V5 or V6 exceeds 35 mm, left ventricular hypertrophy should be considered, especially in middle-aged or older adults. However, high voltage in the chest lead is a common normal finding, particularly in athletic or thin young adults. Consequently, high voltage in the chest leads is not a specific left ventricular hypertrophy indicator. Just as right ventricular hypertrophy is sometimes associated with repolarization abnormalities due to ventricular overload, so STT changes are often seen in left ventricular hypertrophy. Notice that the complex usually has a distinctively asymmetrical appearance, with a slight ST segment depression followed by a broadly inverted T wave. In some cases, these T-wave inversions are very deep. This left ventricular overload-related repolarization abnormality, formerly called left ventricular strain, is usually best seen in leads with tall R waves. The recognition of left ventricular hypertrophy is clinically important for two major reasons. First, diagnostically, left ventricular hypertrophy is a clue to the presence of a potentially life-threatening pressure or volume overload state. The two most common and important pressure overload states are systemic hypertension and aortic stenosis. The three major clinical conditions associated with left ventricular volume overload are aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, and dilated cardiomyopathy. Left ventricular hypertrophy patterns may also occur with hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. Second, Prognostically, patients with left ventricular hypertrophy from any cause are at increased risk for major cardiovascular complications, including chronic heart failure and serious atrial or ventricular arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation and ventricular tachyridnias that may lead to sudden cardiac arrest. As noted, the myocardial fibrosis and neurohormonal abnormalities often accompanying hypertrophy may potentiate both the mechanical decompensation and electrical instability. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.